Well, I hope you're all having a great Easter weekend. In Easter, a, a beautiful time of year. I mean, the grass is starting to turn green, leaves are starting to turn green, the flowers are starting to blossom. It just seems like that everything is kind of coming to life this time of year. And we got families that are getting together to celebrate Easter and they're having Easter egg hunts and, you know, making Easter, Easter baskets. This basket will be full of chocolate bunnies and Easter eggs by Easter morning, I can guarantee you. But it just seems like that the whole world is celebrating this event that happened over 2,000 years ago, the resurrection of Jesus. Let's read about it in Matthew 28, starting with verse one. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Well, he is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So this resurrection that happened to Jesus over 2,000 years ago, what does that have to do with you and I? You know, because we could, you could easily think that, well, yeah, of course, Jesus should have been raised from the dead. He was God's son. He was totally sinless, a perfect human being. And he, he, he fulfilled everything God wanted him to do. And, and why wouldn't God raise him from the dead? That's such a cruel thing to happen to a perfect person, you know? Uh, and so God just kind of rewarded him by raising him from the dead bringing him out of that tomb. Didn't want death to have the last say. And while thinking that, a lot of that is, is very true. But what does his resurrection have to do with you and I? Well, I want us to go to 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul is writing to some people who were doubting the resurrection of Jesus and also just the resurrection of as a whole, they were just doubting the resurrection. And so Paul has this to say to him, and he, and he says this in verse 16. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. And then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. So what Paul is He's saying, if, if Christ wasn't raised from the dead, then this whole thing is kind of going down the tubes. And so he also says in, 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 in verse 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Now, what does this resurrection of Christ have to do with us? Well, the resurrection of Christ opens up resurrection for us. 
Christ's resurrection is like God's rescue plan. It's his redemption of human beings and of his creation. It's what he's always wanted. It's his rescue mission. It's, it's how he is going to bless the world. It's what he promised Abraham back in Genesis 12. And God is using a human being to do it. The second Adam, the faithful Israelite, Jesus Christ, his son. And you see through the resurrection, God is beginning a whole new world. He has launched new creation. So let's go back to chapter 15 to verse 42. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. I, I want you to hang on to that, okay? Hang on to those last few verses that there is this spiritual body that we have, although we live in the natural body right now. I, I wanna go to a story in, in John. We all know this story. It's the story of Lazarus when, when Jesus uh, raised him from the dead. And if you remember, uh, uh, Lazarus was dead and Jesus and his disciples, they were going to Bethany to raise him. And as they approached and, and, and got there, Martha had heard that the Lord is here. And so she runs out to meet him. And she says this in John 11, verse 21. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. You see, Martha was a good Jewish girl. All Israelites believed in a resurrection now, I'm not sure that they knew exactly what that was going to be like. I think they thought more about all of Israel will be raised to life and they will conquer all the nations and rule the world with their one God, Yahweh. That wasn't quite what God had in mind because Israel became part of the problem. But Martha had it right. She knew there was a future resurrection. Now, let's read verse 25. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Did you hear that? Jesus said the resurrection is more than just an event. I am the resurrection. The resurrection is in a person and he's standing in front of you. You see, what Jesus did is he took that future resurrection that, that Martha knew was going to happen and he brought it to the present moment. It is now her present reality. And he proved that by raising Lazarus from the dead. I am the resurrection and the life. Let's read on. The one who believes in me will live, live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? So what does the resurrection have to do with you and I? You see, as believers in Jesus Christ, our future resurrection is also brought into our present reality. You see, we are becoming what we will be. Isn't that what Romans 12 is all about in verse two when it says, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Aren't we being changed from the inside out, transforming us into what we will be? Isn't that what Paul was talking about in Galatians 5 when he was talking about 
the spirit, the spiritual life, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Isn't that future life come to meet us in the present? I mean, what an incredible day that's going to be when Jesus comes back and there will be no more death, no more disease, no more coronavirus, no more tears. We're going to have new bodies, imperishable bodies, immortal bodies. And yet, in our natural bodies, we're struggling. It's hard to live in these natural bodies as we long for what we're going to be. But I want to encourage all of us to live as though that life is meeting us right now in Jesus Christ. Because He is risen. I love y'all. I can't help it.